propositional logic does a good job of allowing us to talk about relationships among individual propositions. And it gives us the machinery to derive logical conclusions based on these relationships. Suppose, for example, we believe that if Jack knows Jill, then Jill knows Jack. And suppose we also believe that Jack knows Jill. From these two facts, we can conclude that Jill knows Jack using a simple application of implication elimination. Unfortunately, when we want to say things more generally, we find that propositional logic is inadequate. Suppose, for example, we wanted to say that, in general now, if one person knows a second person, then the second person knows the first. And suppose, as before, that we believe that Jack knows Jill. How do we express our general fact in a way that allows us to conclude that Jill knows Jack? Here, propositional logic is inadequate. It gives us no easy way of encoding this more general belief in a form that captures its full meaning and allows us to derive such conclusions. Hebron logic is an extension of propositional logic that solves this problem. The trick is to augment our language with two new linguistic features, namely variables and quantifiers. And with these new features, we can express information about multiple objects without explicitly enumerating those objects. And we can express the existence of objects that satisfy specified conditions without saying which objects they are. Incidentally, the logic is named after the logician Jacques Herbrand, who develops some of the key concept. As Herbrand is French, it should properly be pronounced Herbrand. However, most people resort to the anglicized version Herbrand. Um, okay, well, one exception to that is my colleague Stanley Peters, who was a little skeptical on first hearing about it and, for better or worse, chose to pronounce it harebrained. Okay, with all due respect to both of these luminaries, we will use the anglicized pronunciation from here on out, harebrained. In this lesson, we proceed through the same stages as in our treatment of propositional logic. We start with syntax and semantics of the language. We then present a series of examples of increasing complexity that illustrate various features of that language. We then discuss the properties of Herbrand logic, the sentences individually, and we define logical entailment. Finally, we discuss the decidability of various questions in three subsets of Herbrand logic.